All right, welcome to section 11.2, day two. We're going to begin with relationships between categorical variables. So another common situation that leads to a two-way table is when a single random sample of individuals is chosen from a single population. A single random sample of individuals is chosen from a single population and then classified based on two categorical variables. In other words, we're going to take this simple random sample that we took from the single population, but we're going to uh, split that up into two different groups. So we didn't take two samples from two separate populations. We took one sample from one population, but then split it in two. So if that's the case, our goal is to analyze the relationship between the variables. Our null hypothesis is that there is no association between the two categorical variables in the population of interest. The alternative is that there is an association. All right. So we also need to look at the 10% and large counts conditions for the chi-squared test, and these should look familiar, um, though there is a slight difference in the random condition for the two tests. A test for independence uses data from one sample, but a test for homogeneity uses data from two or more samples. So again, a test for independence uses data from one sample. A test for homogeneity uses two or more samples. So when checking this random condition, the data regardless still need to come from a well-designed random sample or from a randomized experiment where we're randomly allocating uh, treatments. 10% condition still holds to uh, test for independence. And then again, all our expected counts uh, should be greater than five when we calculate those. So we're gonna look at a chi-square test for independence. Now an in independence, remember it comes again from just one sample from one population that's then split into two. So we want to see is are those two when you split them apart are those two groups independent? So uh, again, the null hypothesis is that there is no association between the two categorical variables. The alternative is that there is an association. We'll still start by finding the expected counts. We're using the formula that looks familiar to us, and uh, we'll add up all those cells on a two-way table. If the null is true, the chi-squared statistic is approximately a chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom. Again, remember, we're going to find that degrees of freedom by taking the number of rows minus one times uh, the number of columns minus one. And that p-value, again, is the value to the right of whatever our chi-squared statistic is. So it's that area right there. So let's look at an example. So we're going to look at choosing the right type of chi-squared test. The question is, are men and women equally likely to suffer lingering fear from watching scary movies as children? Researchers asked a random sample of 117 college students to write narrative accounts of their exposure to scary movies before the age of 13. More than one-fourth of the students said that some of the fright symptoms are still present when they are awake. The following table breaks down these results by gender. Breaks down these results by gender, but now let's go back. They asked a random sample of 117 college students. That is just one sample. There's Bishop Bell should go off here that now this is a test of independence. We'll come back to this data. So Mini tab out for, for a chi-squared test using this data as shown below. So we'll show how to use this on our calculator as well uh, to get this data into our calculator. These again were our observed values. We can go back and look at that in the previous slide. Those are our previous, those are our uh, observed values for the two-way table. These values right here as it says below, expected counts are printed below observed counts. These are expected counts. So again, these are the observed. These are the expected counts for each of those. 
then the chi-square contributions are printed below. So the individual chi-squared uh, calculation for each of these, in other words, uh, taking that observed minus the expected, squaring it, divided by the expected, for each of those, those are the individual components for each of those different cells. Again, we'd have to add those all up, <coughs> excuse me, uh, for our total chi-square of 4.028. Again, our degrees of freedom can be calculated again by the row to rows minus one. So there's two rows, so two minus one, two columns as well here, so two minus one. Uh, so one times one is one. That's how we get that degree of freedom. And the p-value uh, is used by uh, using table C, um, or better yet, the calculator will calculate that for us as well too. And we'll show how to do that in class. Though there again, there are videos at the top of the chapter on Launchpad. So the problem is assume that the conditions for performing inference are met. Explain why a chi-squared test for independence and not a chi-squared test for homogeneity should be used in this setting. So again, we kind of alluded to that, that a chi-squared test for independence is done because the data were produced using a single random sample of college students who were then classified by gender and whether or not they had lingering symptoms. So again, we started with a single random sample and then broke that into the gender, into the men, and into the women. The chi-square test for homogeneity requires independent random samples from each population, and that was not done. So assume that the conditions for performing inference are met. Uh, so in other words, uh, the randomness, the 10% condition, and the large counts, uh, that are the um, expected counts, are all at least five. So with state, uh, we'll look at our pair of, or the hypotheses for each of these. And we'll say that the null hypothesis is that, again, that there's no association between gender and ongoing fright symptoms. So uh, there is no association, there is no relationship between gender and ongoing fright symptoms. The alternative is that there is an association, that there is a relationship between gender and ongoing fright symptoms. So that's what I like to say sometimes, instead of no association, we can say relationship as well if that helps with a different synonym for that word. So the question is which cell contributes the most to the chi-square statistic? In what ways does that cell differ from what the null hypothesis suggests? Well, again, if we look at the men who admit to have lingering fright symptoms, right here, this is the biggest component in that chi-square. That's the biggest uh, component when we add these all together. That is the biggest one and contributing to that chi-squared value. So uh, men who admit to having lingering fright symptoms account for the largest component of the chi-squared statistic. So in other words, far fewer men in the sample admitted to fright symptoms. There were seven that admitted to fright symptoms, but our expected value uh, right here was 11.69. So we had fewer uh, that would uh, admitted to that um, if we uh, assumed that the null hypothesis were true. So the p-value in this context, here's our p-value is 0 0.045. Uh, and what conclusion would you draw at the alpha level 0 0.01? Well, first of all, we can see that this value is larger uh, than our alpha. So if our p-value is larger than our alpha, we should fail to reject the null. So in other words, if gender and ongoing fright symptoms really are independent in the population of interest, this is what we're going to talk about when we interpret the p-value in context. We'll say that there is a 0 0.045 chance, about a 4.5% chance of obtaining a random sample of 117 students that gives a chi-squared statistic of 4.028 or higher. So that's what that p-value means. It's a 4.5% probability that we would get a chi-squared of this or higher in a sample of 117 students. <clears throat> and then as we alluded to, because the p-value is greater than our alpha, we'd fail to reject the null, and we'd say we do not have convincing evidence that there is an association between gender and fright symptoms in the population of college students. 
So here we go. This is what we should have learned in section 11.2. We should be able to compare conditional distributions for data in a two-way table. So be able to find those conditional distributions within a table to find those, uh, those proportions uh, that are within inside the table. State an appropriate hypothesis and compute expected counts. Be able to do expected counts uh, for two-way tables. Uh, so again, that's that row total times the column total divided by the, the grand total. And uh, for a chi-squared test based on uh, data in a two-way table. I'll be able to calculate the chi-squared statistic, degrees of freedom, the p-value for a chi-squared test based on data in a two-way table. So again, a lot of that's calculator based. Um, do a chi-squared test for homogeneity. So remember again, homogeneity, we've got two different populations and uh, two different uh, sample from each of those where a chi-squared test for independence is that you got one population or one sample uh, that you're taking instead of one sample here we're taking one sample of each so just be able to choose the appropriate chi-squared test based on this information there so there we go this chapter 11 is now complete and we should be able to the last section of homework 41 43 45 47 49 51 through 55 all right work hard uh, and remember uh, we all strive for perfection and if you fall short you fall short on excellence good luck hornets